I'm Marche and thanks for clicking on this video if you are someone who is currently going through a breakup or you're still recovering from a breakup that happened a while ago or you're somewhere in between just know that I sympathize with you I know what you're going through I've been there and I'm gonna share today a few of the things that helped me bounce back after ending my engagement let's go don't get caught up on closure but at the end of the day what exactly is closure sometimes we think it's answers sometimes we think it's an apology sometimes we think it's the truth so it is very common when you are ending a relationship to want closure especially if something traumatic happened like in my case um something traumatic happened and it kind of just snowballed so my breakup was not mutual my breakup was not peaceful or i don't know what the words are leaving me right now but it wasn't we didn't end on good terms so closure was something that i found myself as using as an excuse to reach back speaking from my experience so i am the one who uh initiated the breakup so in my case I needed closure by saying my piece. So don't get caught up on closure and don't use it as an excuse to reach back because at the end of the day, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna get what you're looking for. Um, whether it's answers, an apology, more details about what happened, the, the truth, like you're just going to put yourself in another world spin. Trust me, I did it. Um, and the tip within this tip is if you are someone who needs closure my suggestion is that you choose a form of communication as in a text a letter or an email not a phone call you write out everything that you want to say everything you want them to know get it all out have someone that you trust whether it's a best friend a parent or a therapist proofread it and go over it with you to make sure that you really get out everything that you wanted to say and that it's not rude it's not a bashing letter it's not meant to be hurtful it's not meant to be disrespectful it's meant to get out everything that you're feeling once the letter is to what you want it to be send it and then do as i say not as i do block them after closure is not for them it's not for a response it's for you so again i'm speaking from my experience my breakup did not end mutually or on good terms so a reply in my case did nothing but halt my healing process and keep me in a space of whirlwind emotions so my advice to you out there is if you do want closure send a form of communication block them and we're moving on to number two number two boundaries block mute look at instagram look up look up look up this was a very hard step for me but it is a very imperative step if you are truly trying to move on i'm someone who struggles with boundaries however in a toxic breakup you have to put boundaries in place it is a natural reaction to not easily let someone go out of your life so whoever the opposing person is is going to try to contact you they're going to try to talk to you that is just a normal human reaction. And for your peace and your sanity and your process, you need boundaries and that may look different for everybody. So in my case, it was blocking. Um, and for someone else, it might be simply muting their post or blocking their phone number or just simply, you might have somewhere you can simply say, please stop contacting me, I need time and they will actually listen. But one of those three things i think it is in very it is very important to do because this is where you need to start protecting your peace and having them constantly call you or constantly try to contact you or you're seeing the messages that they're sending is just going to keep you again chasing your tail and keeping you in this space of hurt feelings and in my case it was causing me to question my decision and give me a lot of anxiety about the fact that I had just called off my engagement. Take time to heal. That sounds so simple, but not a lot of us do that after a breakup. Take time to heal and sit with what happened. 
so in my case that looked like literally not dating anyone not talking to anyone going to therapy journaling writing crying because I also learned in that space that just because I was the one who wanted to end things, it didn't make it hurt any less. It still hurt. I was still mourning the loss of something and I needed that time. Don't rush that time either. That could look like two months, three months, five months, seven months, however many, however long it might take. It also is going to look different. I used to think or going in, I thought, okay, I'm going to spend a month alone and I'm going to be over it. How is that even possible? Like, Marche, you just got out of a five-year relationship, but you want to get over it in a month. That's not how it works. So take the time to heal. Find out what you need to heal within that situation. So you've been hurt. You could possibly have been lied to. A host of things that all cut different. You need to sit with those things. So for me, at the act of hurting someone else in that way didn't sit right with me but I needed to do it for me. So sitting with yourself, take time. Do not rush this phase at all. It's not gonna be comfortable. It's not gonna be fun. This is the nitty gritty. This is when you get dirty, you yell. This is when you're crying. This is when you're writing. This is when you need to be in therapy. Take the time to heal. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. When I say you do not want to rush from one relationship to the other and end up hurting an innocent person who did not hurt you in the first place. That is why I say take the time to heal and sit with what just happened to you or what just happened in general. Take the time to heal. If you ever want to be in a successful relationship after your toxic breakup, you need to heal because you're definitely going to carry all of that hurt and all that pain and all that anger into a relationship with someone else and it's going to come out in ways that you might not even notice at first and you're going to end up hurting another person for something they didn't do. Healing doesn't mean that you're over it. It doesn't mean that you can't be upset about certain things. It doesn't mean that you can't ever feel a way about certain parts of your situation later down the road. That's something that I used to do a lot and I still do. If I feel any type of anything, I beat myself up thinking like, oh, I can't still feel away or I can't still be sad or I can't still. No, there's no time frame. Like I said, Healing is working through it. So no, it's not always going to affect you the same, but it might be something that you carry with you throughout life. It might have been so traumatic that it's something you might not ever forget. And in my personal situation, I don't think it's something that I will ever forget. I think it's going to be something that I carry with me throughout life. I don't think it's always going to affect me. Um, like now, it doesn't affect me the same way it did a year ago. And in a year from now, it's not going to affect me the same way it does now. So just know that healing looks different and it doesn't mean to get over it. It just means to put it to the side and work through each piece as its own entity. Number four, surround yourself with amazing people. Without my trial, hands down, I would not have got over my toxic breakup. They supported me in ways that I didn't even know I needed to be supported. They affirmed that I would get through this, that I made the right choice for me. Simple acts that they did, like if you ever feel the need to double back, call me, text me. We can work, talk through it together. Sometimes just sitting on the phone with me for hours. So my tribe knows who they are if you're watching this video because I know you guys are. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Surrounding yourself with amazing people makes you feel like you're not going through it alone. And that does a lot because like I said, healing could literally take years. So doing that alone is gonna make it take even longer. Having amazing people around you and loving on you and affirming you and holding you up when you can't really hold yourself up is unbelievable. And surround yourself with amazing people so that when you can't hold yourself up, they can hold you up. And when you can stand on your own, they can be there to cheer for you. Number five, get up, dust yourself off, and get busy. Whether that's throwing yourself into your passions, focusing on work, focusing on school, working out, traveling, get busy. Fill up your schedule. Don't even leave time. Exhaust yourself almost. Stay busy. Do things you've always wanted to do change your style cut your hair focus on you date yourself dote on yourself love on yourself 
use this time to make you your sole priority focus on you you deserve it that brings us to the end of this video if you have tips that i didn't mention that helped you during your breakup leave them down below for someone else to see i hope that this video helps someone i know it was incredibly therapeutic for me this is actually the first time that i sat down to verbally say how i bounced back and i like to think that i bounced forward i don't like the term bounce back i bounced forward i am the best version of myself to date and i think that had a lot to do with how i took the steps to heal and that I actually learned from the mistakes that I made along the way. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and subscribe and join us at the mirror. We have a glam time. If my ex-fiance is watching this video, I wish you the best. I wish you happiness and thanks.